So now that we understand how different transactions can change the accounting equation, we need to go a little bit more in depth into specifically the owner's equity transactions. And so if we do a quick review, owner's equity was the owner's investment or their right to the assets. In short, it was the company's worth. When we took all of the assets, everything that they owned, and we subtracted their liabilities, which was any debts they have, anything left over, if they decided to sell their company or retire, that would be their owner's equity. And we had called this account title name of the owner, comma, capital. So we're going to break it down actually into three different things. So there are three different changes to owner's equity that you might have. The first would be revenue and the account title of any revenue that we're going to use is sales. This will be the only type of revenue that we have in accounting one, so it should be easy to remember. The second change to owner's equity would be an expense. The account title here is going to be the name of whatever it is expense. So for example, we might have advertising expense or rent expense. And the third change to owner's equity is going to be a withdrawal. And the account title for this is going to be the name of the owner, comma, drawing. So I want to break down revenue, expenses, and withdrawals a little bit more in depth. And then we're going to actually practice those transactions and plugging them into the accounting equation. So again, the first change to owner's equity that we might have is revenue. And this comes from selling a good or service. We're essentially going to make money or make revenue when we sell something, which is good, we like this. And this would cause us to increase our owner's equity. So when we make a sale, we're gonna make money and that should mean that as an owner, my company is worth more. There are two key words that we'll look for in our transactions that can help us define whether or not we're gaining revenue. So the first is sales with cash. So if I sell something to someone and they give me cash, I'm going to make revenue. Now the account title for this is sales. The second way we can gain revenue is by sold services on account. This would be if we used a charge sale or maybe somebody used a credit card to pay for something. Again, the only account that we'll ever have for revenue is titled sales. So our keywords are sales with cash and sold services on account, both affecting the sales account. Now, something that sometimes students are like, well, what the heck's going on? If I sell something and they use a credit card, aren't they paying me at a later date? So shouldn't I wait until that date till I actually get the money? In accounting, we're going to use the concept of realization of revenue. And what this means is we always record our sales revenue at the time of the sale even if they're gonna pay on account and even if they're not gonna pay in that month. So if I went out to Target and bought a crap ton of home decor and I put it on my credit card and my credit card isn't due until next month, Target still records in their accounting procedure in September that they made this sale. They're not gonna record it in October, they're gonna record it in September. And this concept is called realization of revenue. So overall, we like revenue, it increases our owner's equity, it's when we make a sale, hence the account title, sales. The opposite of revenue would be expenses. So this would be when our business has to pay for something to help them operate the business. And this, this causes a decrease or we lower our owner's equity. So if I have to buy something for my business or if I have to pay for daily operations to run my business, this is gonna make my business worth less. There are a bunch of different expenses I might have in a business, and here are some that we might have. We might have an advertising expense, rent expense, utilities expense, repairs expense, postage expense. We might have charity. So anything that we have to pay for to help our business run is considered an expense. These account titles are pretty easy because they'll tell you in the transaction blank expense and that's the actual account title so they'll say paid five hundred dollars cash for an advertising expense so they're like okay i'm going to use advertising expense now the last type of owner's equity is a withdrawal this is when the owner takes an asset typically cash out of the business for personal use and the reason they have to withdraw this is because of that business entity concept we can't mix business and pleasure so i like to think of it as hey i go to an atm to withdraw cash same concept in accounting when we have to withdraw cash from our business to then go use somewhere else we're going to use this withdrawals type of owner's equity 
And so this causes a decrease in owner's equity because if I take money out of my business, it's gonna be worth less. The account title that we're gonna use for withdrawals is name of the owner comma drawing. And again, withdrawals drawing. So that's where we come up with that. Now, sometimes in accounting, there's a tricky thing that happens and it's a transaction where we receive cash on account. This is that example of I went to Target and I put a bunch of money on my credit card when I bought all my home decor. Okay, well, all of a sudden my credit card's due and I'm going to pay it off. And this is a transaction that does not affect owner's equity. Instead, our transaction is going to say something like received $500 cash for sale on account. So we're looking for keywords here. Our first keyword is cash. And then the second keyword is received on account. So we're affecting an increase in cash because we're receiving cash and then accounts receivable from whatever company it is is going to decrease essentially they owe less now if you look at the accounting equation these are two accounts on the same side of the accounting equation so we do need to have opposite sides in order to keep that equation in balance so it's kind of a tricky one because people see those on account and they're thinking, oh, I'm receiving cash from a sale. It should affect owner's equity. No, it does not. It only affects cash and accounts receivable. So we're going to look at a couple different transaction keywords and identify the account titles that go with them. And then we'll practice putting these into the accounting equation. So anytime you see that keyword paid cash, here is our accounting equation and our different accounts. And this matches up with our cash account. The same goes for received cash. Anytime you see that word received cash, we've got cash. That next one received on account was the example I gave you on the last slide. So when you see received on account, we're gonna match up with accounts receivable and then whatever company we're receiving money from. Sold on account is actually gonna have two different account titles it matches up with. The first keyword here is sold, and that's gonna match up with sales. And then the second keyword here is on account. So when we sell something, we should receive money for it. So it's gonna be accounts receivable. So anytime you see sold on account, we'll use the sales account title and then accounts receivable company name. I just said this one, but sales is going to go with shocker sales and then sold services sold is another word for sales. So again, we're going to use sales. The next ones rent telephone bill and advertising are all going to be expense accounts and you see we're just going to say what it is rent expense utilities expense advertising expense. Next up, we have the transaction keyword of owner. This is a throwback. This is one we learned before. So when we, as the owner, do something, we use the name, comma, capital account. But that final one, personal use, is one of the types of ownerness equity we just learned about. So when we have to take something out or withdraw money for our personal use, since we have that business entity concept where we can't mix business and pleasure, then we're going to use the name, comma, drawing, since a withdrawal matches drawing. At this point, we're pretty comfortable with our accounting equation, which is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. And we've been pretty comfortable listing the exact account titles under their account type. So under the account type of assets, we have the following account titles, cash, accounts receivable, company name, supplies, and prepaid insurance. Under the account type of liabilities, we have the account title accounts payable company name. And up until this point, our owner's equity account type only included the actual account title of name comma capital. And in yesterday's notes, we learned that we also have revenue with the account title of sales that falls under capital expenses and withdrawals with the account title of drawing that falls under capital. So we left off in your notes looking at different keywords for transactions. And so on this page, what I want us to do is we're going to be looking at each transaction. We'll highlight or circle the keywords, identify the actual two account titles, and then identify the change that's happening to that account title. Is it increasing or decreasing? So starting with transaction six on August 12th, we sold services on account to Triton for $55. Working left to right, the first keyword I come across is the word sold. And if I check out my master T account, I find that sold 
matches with the account title of sales, which is a type of revenue under owner's equity. The next keyword I would see in this transaction would be account, and its buddy is sold. So if I look for account, I've either got a choice between accounts payable or accounts receivable. When I sell something, I should receive money. So my second account here is accounts receivable. And it's important to remember that anytime we have an accounts receivable or accounts payable, we have to list the company's name after that, telling us who we're receiving money from or paying money to. So in this case, the account title is accounts receivable Triton because Triton owes us money. The next thing we should figure out is whether or not sales and accounts receivable are increasing or decreasing. Sales is a type of revenue and revenue always increases. So that will be a plus. If I have a plus on the right side of my accounting equation, I have to have a plus on the left side of my accounting equation to keep it in balance. The way I can think of this is that Triton owes us more money, so we will be receiving more money from them, and that will be the increase. If I look at the transaction number seven for August 12th, when I paid cash for the telephone bill of $30, I'm going to identify my keywords here. The first keyword I have is cash. And if I look at my account titles, that obviously matches cash. The second keyword and its buddy are going to be telephone bill. A telephone bill is a type of expense, but the actual account name is going to be utilities expense. Now we have to determine whether or not cash and utilities expense are increasing or decreasing. When I pay cash, I have less money, so that's going to be a minus. And my expenses will always be a minus as well. And I can double check that because I have a minus on the left side of my accounting equation equals a minus on the right side of my accounting equation. Transaction 8 on August 18th says received cash on account from Panera for $499. My first keyword here is cash, and that matches with the cash account title again. My second keyword is account, and its buddy is received. And that obviously matches up with accounts receivable. Remember, we need to include the company name, so I have accounts receivable Panera. Now I need to determine whether or not I'm increasing or decreasing. If I receive cash, I'm going to have more, so that will be a plus. And now I need to check I have two asset accounts. So if I have two asset accounts and I know that I'm increasing cash, I'm going to be decreasing my other asset account so that I stay in balance. Essentially, Panera owes me less now because they've paid off a portion of their bill. For transaction nine on August 12th, I've received cash from sales. My first keyword is cash, that matches the cash account title. My second keyword here is sales, and that matches the sales account title. Receiving cash is a positive, and sales revenue is always a positive. Positive on the left, positive on the right. Transaction 10 on August 18th says paid cash to owner for personal use. My first keyword is cash, that matches with our cash account title. My second keyword is owner and its buddy is personal. And if I check out my account titles, I'm going to match this with my withdrawal drawing account. If I pay cash, cash decreases. A decrease on the left equals a decrease on the right side of the accounting equation. And a withdrawal will also always be a decrease. The final transaction 11 on August 12th that paid cash for rent my first keyword is cash, again matching with cash. My next keyword is rent, and rent is a type of expense. If I look at paying cash, cash is going to decrease, and expenses also always decrease. And we've got a minus on the left side of the accounting equation and a minus on the right side. So to practice this, I'd like you to go to the one, three, working together and on your own. It should look like this. If you want to follow along with me on working together, that's great. If you want to skip ahead and check your answers for the working together portion, that's fine too. We're doing the same thing we just did in the notes. So we're checking out our keywords and then we're determining whether we are increasing or decreasing that account title. So transaction 
number one said received cash from sale. My first keyword here is cash. My second keyword here is sales. And I'm going to go down to transaction one and match that up. So cash matches with the cash account. If I receive cash, I'm going to increase it. Sales is a type of revenue, which is an owner's equity. Sales always, always, always increase and revenue always increase. I have an increase on the left and an increase on the right, so I'm fine. In transaction two, my first keyword here is sold. And my second keyword here is account. Sold matches with the sales account, which we just said was owner's equity. Sales always increase our capital account. My next keyword is account. And so this could either be accounts payable or this could be accounts receivable. If I sell something, I should receive money. I also notice that Bowman Company is identified here. So I have a plus on the right. I need a plus on the left side of my accounting equation. Bowman Company owes me more money. In transaction three, my first keyword here is cash. Second keyword here is telephone bill. Cash matches with cash. If I pay cash, that's decreasing. Telephone bill is a type of expense, and an expense is owner's equity, and expenses always decrease. In transaction four, I have cash as my first keyword. And my second keyword here is the word account, and account has a buddy. And his receive. So I'm going to work with cash first. If I receive cash, cash should increase. My second ones were account receive. So again, that's going to go with accounts receivable for Bowman Company. Because I'm working on just the left side of the accounting equation and I need to balance it out, I'm going to be opposite here. So I'm going to have a plus and a minus. Because Bowman Company is paying me they owe me less, and that's why that's decreasing. In transaction number five, my first keyword is cash, and my second keyword is owner, and its buddy is personal. So if I go to owner, that's an owner's equity. Specifically, personal use is a withdrawal. So I'm going to be down here. Paying cash is a negative. And withdrawals are also always a negative. So this is what you should have for the one three working together. If you go to the next chunk, which is the on your own, this is the same exact thing we just did. So now that you hopefully have a grasp of identifying keywords in transactions that involve owner's equity and determining whether or not those transactions are increasing or decreasing, the specific accounts, we're going to practice it with the full money and balances involved. So anytime we actually do this, we'll start with our balances. And for our examples, I'll just start with zero across the board in each single account. And then I do the same thing. So I read the transaction and I look for the keywords. Received cash from sale. My first keyword here is cash. And if I receive cash, I'm going to be increasing it. And so I put a plus. $295 in the cash column. My second keyword here is sales, which is a type of owner's equity, and it's a revenue. Revenue always increases. And so I put another plus 295 under my owner's equity capital account. I have a plus on the left side of my equation and a plus on the right side, which is good. And so now I actually do the math for that line. So 0 plus 295 equals 295. All of my other zeros need to carry down. And then 0 plus 295 equals 295. If I total assets, that is 295. And if I total liabilities plus owner's equity, that is also 295. And I'm still in balance. The next kind of revenue transaction would be to sell services on account. Again, we'll just start with $0 here. My first keyword here is sold. Sold matches sales. Sales revenue is a type of owner's equity. Revenue is always a positive or increase to our business, so I put a plus 350 in my capital owner's equity account. My next keyword here is account, 
and I have to determine whether I have accounts payable or accounts receivable. I like to think of it that if I sell something, I should be receiving money for what I sold. So I look for a receivable from Oakdale, and because I have a plus on the right side of my accounting equation, I need a plus on the left side. Oakdale School owes me more money, so I'd have a plus 350. I then figure out my balances, so any zero can carry down if nothing's happening, and the zero plus the 350 would be 350 for both my accounts receivable and capital. If I total up the left side of my accounting equation, it equals the total of my right side, so I should be set. In transaction number eight, again, we'll start with our zero dollar balances. Uh, my first keyword is cash, and my second keyword here is rent. So I'm gonna look at cash first. If I pay cash, I'm losing cash, so I'm gonna be negative $300. My second keyword of rent is an expense, and expenses always decrease our owner's equity account. So I'm gonna have a decrease in $300. I have two minuses, one on each side, so I can figure out my math and my new balances. So right now I'm at negative $300 on the left side, and that is the same as the right side, negative $300. Here's another expense transaction. It's paid cash for telephone bill. My first keyword here is cash. And again, I'll start with $0 balances. So if I'm paying cash, cash would be decreasing by $40. Telephone bill is a type of expense. It's a utilities expense. Again, expenses always decrease, so I'd be negative 40 there. I do the math and I figure the balance for every single account. So then I can total up each side. Each side is at negative 40 and that equals, and that's awesome. For a withdrawal account transaction, in this example it says paid cash to owner for personal use. My first keyword here is cash. If I'm paying cash, cash is decreasing, so I can put that in. And then my second keyword here is owner, and it has a buddy of personal use. Anytime I see that word personal, that's gonna mean a withdrawal account. And withdrawals means money coming out. Think of you withdrawing money from an ATM. So I would be negative in my owner's equity. I then figure my balances for every single account and I total up my sides and I have a negative 125 equals a negative 125. The last type of transaction that I want to talk to you about that students get confused about sometimes is a received cash on account from Oakdale School. So my first keyword here is cash and if I receive cash I should be increasing my cash. So I'm gonna put a plus 200 there. My second keyword is account, and it has a buddy of received. So I'm gonna to go to accounts receivable, specifically from Oakdale School. Now I'm working with just the left side of the accounting equation right now, so I need to keep this in balance. I already have a plus under cash. That means I have to have a minus under accounts receivable. I can think of this as accounts receivable is paying me off, so they owe less. If I figure my balances, I'm at 200 for cash and negative 200 for Oakdale School, so when I total that left side out, I'm at zero, which equals my right side's zero amount. To practice the rest of these transactions, you have two actual problems. You have this 1-3 application problem and this 1-3 recycling problem. When you click on them, I do want to remind you that at the bottom under attachments, if you click download, this will bring up the total that you should end up with each side on your problem. Uh, your screen will look slightly different from mine. You guys should have a My Document button that you'll be able to click. And both the application and recycling problems will look similar to this. So I'm asking you to analyze the transactions and place the appropriate plus or minus in whichever account title those transactions affect. So just a reminder that on the transaction number line, 
you should only have two boxes filled in and those symbols should match if they're on opposite sides. So I did this first example. So number one says paid cash for rent. So I identify my two accounts as cash and rent expense, which is a type of owner's equity. So I'm going to go down to number one and I'm going to say that I would subtract $300 because I'm paying it in cash. And then rent expense is a type of owner's equity that decreases owner's equity. And the big thing here is that I want you to tell me what type of owner's equity it is. So if it's a rent expense, write rent expense. If it's an investment, you'd write investment. If it is advertising, you'd write advertising. If it's sales, you would write sales after that. So the number lines will only have two boxes filled in because each transaction only affects two accounts. Then you will actually do the new balance for every single account. So I would do the cash account new balance. I would do the accounts receivable new balance, the supplies new balance, the prepaid insurance, the accounts payable, and the owner's equity. So every new balance line should be completely filled in all the way across. If it's a zero, it will sh still show up as this little dash. So both the application problem and then the recycling problem are similar like that. Once you finish those two, you can go on to the end of lesson review. Feel free to use your notes.